Once a season or so, we invite the gregarious gardening man, Wim Vanderzam, to talk plant talk with us and plunk a few seedlings and baby plants into a pot or two. He is the boss at Art Nap Plantland, and it is my pleasure to welcome Wim Vanderzam back to Studio 4 to tell us more and show us a few things today. Sure. Why not? Uh, urban gardening, hot trend, big trend. Hot trend. I mean, there's so much you can do in planters and, and growers um, and, and plant producers are, are breeding things now for planters. So like mm -hmm. smaller items, things that you can grow that you might love in, in old homes where they were larger, like lilacs for a great example is lilacs actually, because there's a now, you know, a dwarf lilac that you can grow in a pot on your patio or, an, or, a, or a little, um, uh, little tree um, lilac in a pot. So that type of thing is happening because people I want life. Yes, even and we want to go small. back to the farm, so to speak. Some days I do go back to the farm, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe they'll put me back on the farm. Uh, the, uh, the smell of a lilac on a Oh. On a patio, how wonderful. Spectacular. Do they come in beautiful colors? Beautiful colors, mostly purple, but definitely uh, you can get various colors, but like I say, dwarf size. I won't grow like over four feet. Okay. Um, so it's nice. You can grow them on your oh, patio. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And uh, uh, baby apple trees. I saw a baby apple tree on somebody's deck last summer. Yeah. Baby apple trees. Yeah. Uh, espalier apple trees. Um, columnar apple trees. So they just grow basically in a column form up to like... Uh, eight, ten feet and, mm -hmm. and produce a lot off of one little tree and can be grown in a container but it would have to be a big container but if for small space even in a condo setting in, in the ground is best uh, but yeah you can grow fruit trees very close to your back door. And you can apparently grow peas and carrots and herbs on your deck too if, if your condo company allows it. Yeah, well, I don't know what the rules are. There's that. But growing your own veg, how great? Where do you start? How do you start? When do you start? You, you actually, it's a good question because when do you start? I mean, we're still in February and mm. is it time to be putting some things in the ground? And, and yes. And it depends, I guess, on, on how you want to garden. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I know if you, if you don't have a lot of space, what do you do? Well, you don't have to have a lot of space necessarily. You can grow vegetables and, and, and fruiting shrubs in smaller spaces. But so you have to kind of determine what do I want? What do I mm -hmm. use? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to use, um, uh, say, rosemary for cooking and all, well, don't waste the space. Exactly. So and also at our house, we have a rule called ABZ which is anything but zucchini. Oh. Because not that we don't love zucchini, but if you put one zucchini in, it makes so many zucchinis. Yeah, you can get a lot. You can get a lot. And then yeah. if you don't eat them every day, then you get giant zucchinis. That's true. But those zucchini blossoms, yum. Yeah, you can eat the zucchini blossoms. And you know, picking the zucchini when they're small and you know, grilling them on the barbecue, there's not so much yeah. you can do. But yeah. so, so I say always zucchini because, oh, okay. because there's a no failure. You can't lose when you grow zucchini as far as success goes anyway. Mm -hmm. so. so it's easy peasy. Very easy. Uh, what's a difficult veg to grow or is there such a thing? Like if you're not really good at growing things, you didn't come from the farm. Yeah, yeah. Is it tougher to grow peas or carrots or Swiss chard or does it matter? Well, there's definitely things that are tougher to grow yes. than others. In and this climate, in this zone. In this zone. And it also depends on if you, you're going to be growing things in planter boxes, in pots, mm -hmm. or in the ground. Because you, for the most part, you wouldn't grow, um, say, root crops in containers. It doesn't okay. work. They, they heat up too much, and it's not an appropriate location for them. So a root crop like a carrot. Like a carrot or a I told you off air, Vicki Gabbro uh, is into gardening. She has a yard yard. Oh, well, that's but she grew carrots her first year that were uh, knobby. Right. They were sculptures. <laughs> they weren't like the carrots you see in the store. <laughs> oh, no. They didn't go straight down. They, but they were beautiful. They were just yeah. going this way and that way. And, and, you know, that's a good example as to how people think, well, I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something wrong. There's always an answer. There's mm -hmm. always a reason for, for something ha happening. Um, and, and probably in that instance, um, it, it's not, the soil is not deep enough. So okay. she, the, the carrots are probably hitting hard pan. Or a rock. Or, or a rock. They can't grow um, deep a enough. Coffin? They're going <laughs> to. No, I kidding. Hope not. <laughs> Vicky, what do you got in your <laughs> no, backyard? She doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but they hit, hit hard pan or something, and then they have to grow sideways because they can't grow further down. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, people say, I tried basil, I've tried basil, and I just have no success with basil. And yet I love basil, and yet it's an easy thing to grow. Usually the case is people try it too early. Is that there's, it? There's no so it sense. doesn't like cold. It hates cold. It can't tolerate any cold. Does so there's it like no sun? sense. It loves sun. And, and and for the most part, every vegetable and every herb 
requires a certain amount mm -hmm. of sun or lots of sun. But yeah, but you know, they try basil in, in April or early May and it fails. You can't really start basil until the end of May. Really? So don't so, put the basil yeah. in today? Today. What but can then, we put in today? Yeah, you should actually be starting lots of your, uh, your, your greens, your, your spinach, your lettuce, things like that. They can today? get out early. Well, you can start them inside. You can actually Tomorrow? even sow them outside. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, you can sow okay. them. They may so not start grow. inside. That's but if what you you're saying. Start them inside. They can be planted out if they're if they're if they've started to grow. You mm -hmm. can actually plant them out now, even if they get really? snow on top of them. They would still just sit there. But but they're rooting out usually with any amount of right. warmer temperatures. So there's lots of type of things. Root crops definitely get them growing. They, um, you know, onions. You're best to start onions in the set form, for example. So a set is like a a, a little bulb. And you can plant them now, mm -hmm. get them going. Your potatoes, and they're you can beautiful get them going. onions yeah. when they grow, and they grow the big oh, flowers. They're gorgeous. They, know, even if you don't eat onions. Uh, so, if I want to, can you show me? I want to plant a carrot, a pea, a Swiss chard. Sure. Uh, what's the best way to start indoors? You're talking indoors. Do you have to have a greenhouse or anything? No, a no. nice bright windowsill is all Just you Just really in the need. living room. Yeah, that does the job. <laughs> sure. What's that on your window? So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just got oh, my I'm vegetable mm -hmm. <laughs> crop going. Um, you know, there's things. Like the larger, um, larger seeds and peas is a good example. That would be something you would just start outside. You don't need to start okay. that in, in little trays you inside your it. home. Um, and the same probably with carrots, same idea. You would want to start them, just direct sow them in your rows outside. Okay. But, Swiss chard. But something like, say, uh, a, well, I've got, for example, for sure tomatoes. Tomatoes is something you would like to get going early because they do like warmth to get growing and then you want to sort of um, set up the little plants when it's warm okay, enough. Okay, so not just the seeds, so grow a little plant. How far down do you put the seed? Well, the seeds, nice thing about seeds is you don't have to do much in the way of, um, you don't have to do much in the way of sort of uh, burying them deep. Okay. But that's sometimes a difficulty is, is finding a spot. I sometimes have difficulty in the show with either trying to take I'm plants apart or. I'm thinking that time, well, I shouldn't yeah. bring it up. I do every time, the <laughs> time you try to split the hosta. That to was a. <laughs> Tough day for you. Yeah, that didn't work out so You were well. perspiring. I, I didn't like that one. No. Um, tomato seeds, as you probably, as most they're everyone so knows. They're tiny because well, they're tomato that's seeds. That's actually a big seed. Is it? Tomato seeds, as, as anyone would know by eating a tomato, is a relatively large seed. You right. get into some of their lettuces and things. They're very, very fine. But really, you know, so you want to take them. don't be sneezing. <laughs> one or two at a time, and you would basically just take and drop maybe two per cell. And this is just a little... Um, seedling cell. It's just an right. easy way to, easier way to grow them. Where's one that's loose here? And starter so mix. Individual. Okay. And you put them into a starting soil. Um, the idea behind that is the starter soil is is um, very light. It's a very light consistency. Right. It's it's easy is for it things to root into. It's organic. It okay. is. Okay. Um, but it's very light. Uh, it's based peat, peat moss based. But the idea behind that is is being light. It's easy for little seeds with soft roots to grow into to get a start. Okay, so pack so, lightly, put them in, when do you water? And then you start you push watering them down? immediately. Yeah, so I'm um, kind of oh. just putting a couple of I'm helping there you. There we go. You are. I, the diva is okay. not going to get messy. <laughs> that would be your, your job. Punch, that's all you do, just you tamp just them down. them and then just cover them over lightly, basically. Oh, great, so you that. don't have to dig deep don't or dig anything deep. like that. You punch the seed down, cover them over lightly. And, you know, and uh, um, something that is important is being peat moss based, Peat moss, when dries, is hard to moisten again. Right. So you probably best have like a little mister bottle of some sort. Oh. And mist the soil, and do that regularly to get the soil moist. Um, and a good way to water them too, because with a mister spray, it uh, you're not really uh, uh, you're not disrupting the soil too much. Got so it. you're not disrupting. And you're the not roots. blowing the seed someplace like in the very corner of the pot. That's right. And you don't want to drown them. You don't want it to all come together. So yep. easy. How long before you see a little green? Within a week, in most instances. Really, and just in a sunny window green. or a nice window. A or sunny window. Lots of light. And if you want to sort of get things going a little quicker, like you're coming into the season faster, right. put the whole tray for a day or two or three uh, on top of your freezer. Because there's a heat, there's heat that's drawn off your freezer. Oh. When the soil warms, it'll germinate the seeds faster. Okay. And then once they germinate, once you start seeing life, then get them to. And how right high away. before into the garden? Well, timing is important for that one. Like tomatoes, you don't need to put them out really before. You know, mid-April would be the earliest, and you okay. still get a little protection there. But May. But then again, if you want to start, say, you know, some of your lettuce or some of your 
your um, zucchini or sure. not zucchini, sorry, spinach crops or like greens, they can go out early. Mm -hmm. So you basically want to start them inside, then you can plant them out of any kind. Okay, time and when they start to grow, when something like a carrot starts to grow, a baby finger carrot, you have to thin, don't you? Yeah, you don't want them growing just in, in great multitudes. So, um, you know, starting them and thinning them um, right. as they start to grow so that each individual can grow, each carrot sure. can grow individually into a good size. Okay, carrot. so then we can have a salad come, uh, oh, June or July. Now, yeah. this is beautiful, Helleborus. Helleborus. Oh. And there's so many different Certain varieties. Kind. Yeah, there is so many different, and I like this one's called lavender. Um, but why I really like it is it's got the flower that stands high above the leaf. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are, are tucked in, hidden in, in amongst the leaves, and you can't really see them. Some of the flowers are just too dark. This, Mine's already blooming this year. Well, they start usually in January. Yeah. So. But isn't that beautiful? And yeah. and it's high above the plant. It's a nice, um, soft pink color. Totally um, gorgeous. It's, it's, it's something that's in bloom now, which is nice. In your garden to have something I know. in bloom is just quite Well, when something blooms in my garden, it's a good day. It's a good day, exactly. <laughs> it's a good day, especially now. And that is... Look at this guy. This is Sarcococca. And Fine. It, the nice thing is it, it is evergreen, but this newer variety called Fragrant Mountain is nice because it's very compact. Mm. And if you know Sarcococca, sometimes they get a little leggy. This one won't. But the, they're, they're white blossoms, white pinky blossoms. You can see them here, but they're so fragrant. And then bloom now. So mm. at this time of year to have something in bloom again, and with some fragrance close to your front door, something is, uh, okay. is sometimes, you know. Oh, something great. Nice so you've got the Sarcococca, Sarcococca at the front door. Uh, needs sunlight? Not. Uh, Part sun, part okay, shade. Because it's evergreen. And what about this guy? It prefers east girl. facing girl, exactly. Hello, Boris. It, sounds like a girl to me. Well, it's beautiful. It has flowers, so it's got to be. A girl. Okay. <laughs> How nice to see nice you again. Thank Annie. you. Thanks for planting. All Wim Vanderson from Art Nap. He's got two, right? Yeah, I do have two. Two stores. Uh, remember, you can catch all of our conversations on YouTube or follow us on Twitter at Fanny Studio 4.